We're in the Tech Net segment of the FYI show with Llewellyn Scholtz from the ICANN Centre. Now today we're celebrating Cyber Security Month. Llewellyn Scholtz, a hearty welcome in studio. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Zamila. You're quite happy that I'm in studio, eh? I'm huh? very happy when you're <laughs> okay, in studio. Okay, okay, good, good. You're doing well, sir? Definitely, I'm doing well, and I appreciate the weather today. Yes, you know, just off air, you spoke about your the children that you took to the to the police station for for to have affidavits um, signed. Is that what it is? Yes. And 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 and, and why well, I'm mentioning it, right, Llewellyn, is the fact, you know, the, uh, we had your 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 learners here in yes, studio, yes. and they do look up to you. Oh my word. And 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 now I also understand. I mean, I understood then why, and I and yeah. I'm sharing this so that people can also understand that the ICANN Center is not just an institution. It is where you want to see your children in inverted commas make yes. a success. You hold their hands. You throughout, you you journey yeah. through their lives, and uh, so well done once again, Llewellyn. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you for that, Jamila. I thought with everything going on in Elsie's River. Um, hmm. with the range of things which we are aware about and at the risk of the kids coming to the centre. So um, it's not only Elsie's River um, kids, it's, it's all, all over. over. We're mm. talking about Mitchell's mm. Plain, the whole area, because we're running a learnership. And the new requirement was a uh, police clearance and I couldn't let them walk and just to make things complicated. So I took them to the police station and I was there and we were waiting in line. So uh, they took their time and afterward I told the policeman, listen, we're just coming here to sign a affidavit. Mm. Let's just expedite the process for us. And immediately those kids signed. Otherwise, they would have waited in a very long line uh, thinking of they came here to make a case. Yeah. But otherwise, it was sorted and we took them back and it was a day where... Because it's a learnership, uh, we had a uh, mix seater coming out to do verification with these learners. So it's those kind of things that where we go the extra mile helping kids not only to enroll because young people struggle even with this um, documents, you know, true, to certify true, everything, to get true. this, to get that in place. So we're holding the hand and thank you moisture, for that. Moisture, Papa, moisture. <laughs> oh, you're calling me Papa. Papa. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> but now, speaking of, of, of the ICANN Centre, is there anything um, else that you'd like to share what's happening at the ICANN Centre? Yes. Um, maybe just in brief, but mm. uh, we've reached a milestone in uh, helping young people with digital entrepreneurship. I'm in the process of um, just planning, as I mentioned last week, I'm looking at running a cybersecurity workshop. And I think next week in our show, I'll be giving the date uh, where people can come for a free, I'm going to say a free workshop, not a course, a free workshop one day where people will learn more about even what we talk about today. It's going to be cyber safety and cyber security. So I'm looking at having, having that because that becomes extremely crucial. And from that, I'll be mentioning more. There is another funded program I have up in my sleeve, but I'll mention it next week. Then um, I also must say the last time we recruited, we did find people contacting us through our WhatsApp line, through the Radio 786 Technique Show. Thank you. And, and those people are in the program. Lovely. They're just very shy. I've asked them several times to come mm. to the show, but mm. let's leave them um, up until they finish the program and we see late October, early November, uh, like we did last year, where they come to the studio and they talk about the experience. Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much uh, for that. Llewellyn Scholes from the ICANN Centre, as I've mentioned, and they are situated at number 268 Halt Road in Elsie's River. Now, um, I know that Llewellyn says it, he, you know, the situation in Elsie's River, but it is safe for you to Definitely. go to the ICANN Centre. It is a safe um, uh, space, right? Definitely, yeah. Thank All right. For that. We will share um, contact details a little bit later. Now, as I've mentioned, we're looking at celebrating Cyber Security Month, and this October marks International Cyber Security Awareness Month, and serves as a reminder for businesses that there are simple effective ways to keep your company online safely and protect the personal data of staff and clients. Now, cyber criminals are no longer only targeting large corporations. Whether your business is big or small, in a city or small town, no one, no one is exempt from criminals trying to gain access to your money 
or personal information. Now, in line with this year's theme, which is Secure Our World, the importance of cybersecurity risk management in securing your business in a digital world must be emphasized. Now, this month or, or this month-long initiative um, encourages individuals, organizations and communities to learn about cybersecurity risks, adopt safe online practices and enhance their overall digital security and social engineering. Now, Llewellyn, just before we um, continue, um, we had a, a, a guest um, on, um, we were speaking to a guest, right? And he's from the South African Medical Research Council. And they had the National Science Week, which was held between 30th of September and 5th of October. And their theme was, living in a high-tech world, should we be concerned? Very interesting. Def- um, definitely. Definitely. I can see the potential in that, yeah. especially in that industry. And in, in that industry and how, and, and, his, and, and it was about, you know, how it impacts on health, how it impacts on well-being and society, and how technology and, of course, AI is going to um, breach the gaps, you know, for those um, in the rural areas. That is definitely true. The reason why, because if you look at South Africa, we have our metro areas, we have our urban areas. Yeah. And there's a range of constraints for those that are in the rural that are in need of medical services. And if technology can be deployed as a replacement to build more capacity, then mm. we're looking at solve these, solving these problems. Already in Africa, uh, the medical industry is trending, I'm going to say in some countries, True. because of some research, because of some investments, and because of also integrating technology. Um, they've deployed it, uh, it's helping, and they're also looking at how South Africa can do it. So definitely, mm. when it comes to, I get excited. If I can think of, for now, I don't think of the advantages. I think of the advantages of what technology can help the health sector and expedite things. Indeed, and, and, and how apt it is to talk about Cyber Security Month. <laughs> yes. You know, a follow on to my, my guess that I had. So let's... Then ask the question, Llewellyn, is Cybersecurity Month, is it global? Yes, it's definitely global. So you have different countries celebrating it. Mm. I think more join the bandwagon of awareness. Um, everyone is writing a story about how to be aware. Yeah. And we are talking about breaches are uh, occurring infrequently as organizations suffer uh, the exploits of these um, acts and also the motivation of how they can gain the compromised data. Now, one research, uh, 14 it, 2023 Cybersecurity Skills Gap reports that data breaches jumped 80% from 2021 to 2022, Mm. with 84% of survey respondents uh, incurring at least one incident. So, uh, we're looking also um, also at that. And also, the other thing which I want to mention is the company called IBM. Uh, the threat and breach, uh, uh, breaches aren't only becoming more frequent, but also more costly. So yes. IBM have costed a data breach report. So the average breach costs uh, businesses 4.5 million. That's an all-time high. But when I, I want to get to something which is very interesting. Mm. Three quarters of data breaches are due to the human element. Verizon has reported that, meaning that the lack of awareness or skills play an important role in this regard. So Fortinet report shows nearly that 70% of organizations face additional risk because of the skills gap in cybersecurity, with most struggling to hire even professionals in that regard, especially the cloud security and security operations. Now, as a result of breaches, most board of directors want to increase the headcount while businesses are increasing in the investment in everything from operations to employee training. So that's good news as awareness and consideration of cybersecurity best practices are like, for instance, like sharing passwords, using passwords mm. has become an imperative or even how we want to say a virtual for everyone online today. And it's because of these kind of threats uh, that we face that we have this month called Cybersecurity Awareness to talk about it, even if you've experienced it, now is an opportunity to drop us a message. We can talk about it and share it. And that will help a lot because that is how awareness gets built. Yeah, 786 uh, 10 11 12 is the WhatsApp number. And 
um let's have a look here thought i saw a whatsapp coming through but we will um have a look in a bit so how is social engineering integrated into cyber security or cyber safety i think we've talked about it but we haven't coined it yet mm. so social engineering is an at- attack method that uh, manipulates individuals into revealing sensitive information uh, that's important so we can talk about people that poses themselves as trustworthy entities exploiting human psychology to breed security defenses now they use uh, familiarity in that regard and why that is important it's the same as what we experienced where people would pose themselves as a uh, municipality worker iscom worker mm. and then not that trusted person and they would want to break into your houses it's more or less the same principle uh, and they want to do it with a sense of urgency or pressure employees to hand over desired information the same principle applies in social engineering we're talking about phishing as an example it involves attackers deceiving individuals to divulge sensitive information either through emails um whereby you can click on an email or they would ask you to respond to it now to combat this kind of threats um employees ought to be educated about the risk and teach them how to verify sender authenticity what does it mean where does the email come from yeah. and encourage reporting of suspicious emails now many times uh, people who's working behind a computer have a lot of fear oh i don't know excel i don't know what i'm struggling with this and you're going to find people keeping quiet but in the case of cybersecurity once you get a suspicious email if you have a work whatsapp group drop it in there and ask them if the feedback are common that no one knows about this kind of email or there's no transaction in that regard you've safeguarded yourself and also the company that you've worked for in just sharing it so awareness is very important mm. so um regular phishing tests we talk about can further enhance awareness and also prepare yourself and in the end empowering your team can be proactive against these attacks to maintain a secure digital environment also when we talk about cybersecurity the these threats are placed into a category that you can know that the attackers will deploy when attempting to gain access to either information or they wish to exploit human error <laughs> again people sitting behind a computer having that fear must I click on it must I not click on it it seems like the attackers now are building the psychology or even the attack on human error and behavior why because the system is blocking them and if the person on the other side can give them entrance or access by click on something they will be able to access it so those are the kind of things we're talking about uh, that we ought to be aware and that all that falls into the category of this new word called social engineering hmm all right 0786 10 11 12 a listener says llewellyn living in a high-tech world is concerning indeed looking at the mistakes made by nurses and pharmacists these um giving wrong meds to patients on basic tech right imagine the errors on high tech systems where people have even less knowledge of how to use it so it comes probably to to becoming um you know skilled and yes and, definitely and, yeah and it and it involves because with technology you talk about input processing output maybe to advance it you can talk about input processing storage and output So data can only be accurate if it gets inserted accurately. Data which are placed in which is not completely accurate can become accurate why because of a uh, generative AI. Mm. So eventually technology can become much more accurate to predictive analysis. So definitely I I do understand what the listener is saying it's all about the, having the skilled people. Again we're talking about how people have to re-engineer themselves with skills becoming actually accurate data administrators the world is going to in future need data administrators mm. um, because ai can only work with data which we are able to insert so if we have skilled data administrators in the health sector as an example which we are talking about then we're looking at a, at a positive outcome and i Thanks. think that is so important um a uh, point that you made well and you know artificial intelligence is only as intelligent as the info that a human has you know that is planted, true and that is what in. people are not uh, understanding mm. it doesn't get placed into a article or it's publication it's not just magic yeah 
Um, people need to know that. No one is writing about it. But when someone wants to implement a big AI as a initiative, they're going to have to start out, where do I collect the information Correct. from? Correct, yeah. It's data collection, yeah, indeed. So so share more with us on mobile security in the workplace. Yes, it seems like the mobile phone has become a blind spot when it comes to cybersecurity, but we can add on it. A recent survey um, has shown that security leaders found that 91% of respondents believe that employees might exfiltrate data from corporate systems through their mobile phones. Mobile phones, it's popular and it's become also a target for cyber crimes, although people are not completely aware about it, or people have excluded it from the organization's cybersecurity strategy. Uh, just to add, uh, not all employees download company data mm-hmm. with a bad intent, but in the end, the end result can be the same. Massive damage to a company's reputation and revenue. So organizations should prioritize sharing best practices and acceptable use of personal mobile devices for work-related tasks, including not downloading, downloading sensitive data, but implementing multi-factor uh, authentication we spoke about, verifying through mobile phone and email, and avoiding unsafe public Wi-Fi networks. Let's assume you are at a coffee shop and you just want to finish your work. You decided uh, you don't want to use your own mobile data and hotspot your phone. Mm. You're in a coffee shop, you're going to leverage from that data. <laughs> you go ahead, you work, you're logging into your company information. It can be posed as a risk according to what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, this big word called data exfiltration refers to unauthorized transfer of sensitive information, such as personal data, financial records, or even intellectual property from a computer and even a network. So this can be seen as an accidental leakage by employees through malicious insiders who intentionally leak data to unsafe locations. Now, we've watched the movies where we see how the person comes in, they break in, they go into the system, they copy 85%, 90%, and there they go. That is what we call uh, data exfiltration, and we ought to be aware about it. Coming back to our mobile phone, now let's assume someone has, or the company has Microsoft as a preferred provider on their phone, Mm. and they use SharePoint, they use the emails, and because everyone wants to work on the go, They then, apart from the laptop, install it on the phone. That is what we're talking about. The phone then can be posed as a risk because your phone you can actually use to connect to unsafe unsafe Wi-Fi and that can be a way of these hackers penetrating the information. But also what we're talking about because some of these documents now can then be locally stored on your phone, which can in sometimes be unsafe also. So hackers are looking at various ways where to collect the data, and where to access the data. So these things, it may not be a concern at this very moment, but we need to look at all the, I'm going to use the word, blind spots that people have that they're not looking at, that the hackers are looking at to actually um, attack these kind of systems. Last year, we came across that one of our systems in South Africa um, got breached, and it was very sad, and it happened through, according to news articles, through a memory stick that was inserted and information was collected. Sure. So again, last year I learned human error. Again, the emphasis this year in the cybersecurity man is to be aware, but looking at how to avoid the human error. Mm. Thank you so much uh, for that, Llewellyn. Now, before we take a break, let's just squeeze in this question then. Um, so can you please reflect on what we have discussed about in a category format for everyone to, to understand it, please? Okay. We talked about malware attacks. Yeah. That means malicious software that would go either on your laptop or either on your phone. And I would go over again. Mm. But under this category of malware, you would find that's a category of your viruses we're talking about. The worms, the Trojans. Um, worms uh, goes back a few years and it is where your computer gets infected. But all of a sudden you see duplicated files. A um, few years back, even on your memory stick, you would see duplicated files and it makes your PC slow. That is a worm virus. Then you have your Trojan. Uh, we all know the story of the Trojan where the actual virus is hiding up until it gets activated through a software or through uh, a, another system and your PC will not be the same because sometimes the Trojan 
attach itself to a system file and the moment you remove the Trojan, you remove the system file and all of a sudden you see that the computer is not starting up or there's a range of errors because it had attached itself. Mm. So we're addressing this uh, with malware is to have a reputable antivirus and an anti-malware software, not talking about antivirus only. So it seems like the battle has become much more intensive to get more software. And also you may have the software, but if you do not regularly update okay. software, mm. It won't be become um, relevant, and also avoiding downloading attachments or software from unknown sources. And I think we can still continue. Yeah, me. Do we have time before the break? Yes, yes, yes. Continue. And there's something called phishing attacks. Right. So um, it's the attempts to obtain sensitive information by disguising as a trustworthy entity. Right. These types are email phishing. So you have to check out that emails which you are receiving. Uh, spear phishing and also well phishing. That is specific targets. Um, towards the company. How we address it? We have to educate our people on identifying phishing attempts. Is this the real person? Is this a trustworthy person? The other option, the IT person must look at what we call email filtering solutions. You can filter your, sol uh, filter your email system. That mm -hmm. means if you have a firewall in place, uh, you are able to put rules on the firewall. If you don't have a firewall in place, you can go to your actual router and you can put some rules there that can block specific uh, emails and you can increase what we call the firewall on the router it's not really so much complicated mm -hmm. the last one is encourage verification of links and senders before clicking so yeah. before we click let us first verify if this email comes from the authorized sender mm, and and you do you do emphasize that on a weekly basis Definitely. as well so how do we address phishing Okay, address phishing. The only way to address it is that people... Educate them. Yeah, to educate them. Because I think the talk today is about human error mm. and behavior. So we can blame systems, but like it, like they said, three quarter, 75% of attacks was actually through people that was vulnerable and not aware. So in this case, if you're going to be ignorant about it, it can cost everything so that's the reason why we're talking about again encourage verification of links if you're receiving a proof of payment and you know you haven't done the job sure. for that specific uh, invoice and mm. you open it um, in most cases i've seen how someone has opened up a proof of payment it was not a pdf it was a html file and it redirected them to a website by clicking and redirecting a ransomware took place and all their files were locked. And Goodness. that was a very, very sad situation. So verification of links, by now we know it, we need to check where the email is coming from. Radio 786 100.4 FM, we're in the segment Take a Net with Llewellyn Scholtz. He is from the ICANN Centre. Now we are celebrating Cyber Security Month and it is global as we heard. And we were, you know, speaking about uh, different things around cyber security what to look out for and um, at the end of the day you know what it's about us being responsible um, and we and, and I think Llewellyn you, you mentioned this I think every week um, responsibility st still is with us because we are the ones that do the clicking that wants to be yes. uh, we want to open up everything but without yep. Uh, a thought and so again just before the break um, you you spoke about how important it is um, to verify links and senders before clicking so I'm gonna go to the whatsapp line it says here question for Llewellyn is it possible for someone to hack your Wi-Fi and install spyware on your devices example he says phones laptops TVs etc is that possible? That would be they can they can hack the the internet definitely the router oh. definitely. Now reaching your device that's going to be a little bit complicated. Mm. Although they can access the IP address, that is one thing. They have limited access towards it, so they will have to send you something that you can click on your side, <coughs> and you'll be able to open yourself up. So. They can access the router, definitely. I'm not mm. going to doubt that. But not yet the device itself, up until the person on the inside or on the other side, click on something that it can activate and it creates an open tunnel for information to be sent. So that can be a challenge. Okay. 
That's right. Thank you so yeah. much uh, for that. And and what advice did you give with, with that concern when it comes to your Wi-Fi and all of that? Your Wi-Fi, you have to continuously change your password. That's mm. very important. And on your Wi-Fi, there's something called SSID. Mm. That's the area that people pick up uh, once they come and visit you and they pick up you have Wi-Fi. You can hide your SSID. You can hide it. You don't need to make it visible to people. You can just connect the family uh, but you can hide your SSID and people that come and visit you won't pick up that you have Wi-Fi. Okay, there yeah. we have it. Yeah, the great stuff. So, just before the break, you you gave us a breakdown of the like Maui attacks, the phishing attacks, the, um, and so on. So, are there more advanced attacks? Yes, um, there's there are actually more, but one of it is called the Man in the Middle. It sounds like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking wow. at um, meaning that we're talking about interception of communication between two parties. Mm. One example can be eavesdropping. We're talking. So it's an attack that occurs when a hacker intercepts, deletes, or modifies data that is between transmitted devices. That is possible. Okay, we've seen it globally. Um, season hackings that goes hand in hand. Once a person goes online, then they'll be able to access. They can use encryption for all communications. Um, avoid using public Wi-Fi for sensitive transactions, such ah. as if you're going to make a payment. If you just want to access your Wi-Fi, just let your WhatsApp can just go through. Mm. No problem, because your end-to-end encryption will help you to keep it safe. But you have to remember that's important. There's something called VPN, and maybe the technology people they know about it implement virtual private networks for secure connections so that means if you want to run a network between people that people have no access Mm. and it is private and it's not so public as the internet um, you are able to run a virtual private network that's actually the new language that a lot of technology or people are using for those that have an extreme fear of uh, the data that is being extremely sensitive VPNs is actually the solution. So coming back to that big word, man in the middle, it's an attack occurs when an attacker intercepts and relays communication between two parties and believe that they are directly communicating with each other. Mm. Uh, So this type of attack allows the attacker to eavesdrop, alter, manipulate, and change some messages in that regard. So that is what everyone needs to know. Again, we're talking about eavesdropping and also system hacking. But just to add more, what's system hacking? The attacker takes control of a user's session or connection after they have authenticated with a web application. This this is often done by stealing session cookies or even tokens. After the user logs into an online banking account, the attacker hijacks the session. So this is quite advanced. Mm. Um, This is what can happen if people can log into it. This happened globally. I cannot yet speak on behalf of South Africa if this type of attack has taken place here. Maybe we just need to follow the news or people ought to be more open on what has happened. Uh, then we would know. So we are looking at a... The, and this is what I see, Jamila. Eventually, people is going to start to talk. And that's the reason why if people think every time I'm touching on cybersecurity, I think the reality exists where people need a safe space to talk about things. Mm. And when it comes to technology, people ought to, ought to talk about their challenges which they face. And if a soul like this can help, where people can put something on WhatsApp, even as an anom- anonymous, this information can be collected. And, and in future, it can be used in such a way whereby we can say that these stories do exist. It was mentioned on the show. Uh, people whatsapping they share these stories mm. and it will help other people out there um, and especially to anyone that have encountered these kind of things now is the time to speak because you, maybe it, it has happened to you it has harmed you yeah. but at the same t- in the same case what has harmed you can save someone, someone else. else so we need to talk about it so let's talk <laughs> now let's talk about some practical steps everyone can take to enhance the online safety. Give us those few, give a few tips, um, Llewellyn. I wonder why mm. we are keeping on forgetting our passwords. Wow. Ouch. I and, know. And I'm I one know of those, we are man. all struggling when uh, the passwords are complicated. Uh, people are putting the alpha. Please find a book or somewhere or a safe space just to remember that password. Um, mm. If it's going to be something that makes you angry and trigger you, if you have to type that in, 
uh, then type it in. But try to remember the password. I meet up a lot of people that says to me, how can I remember my password? Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to have a mental health session on that <laughs> to, to see how we can work around that. Right. But really, it's we have to treat the password not seeing it as a sort of access in that regard, but see it as this is very important to me. Another new word, uh, we spoke about a two-factor authentication. If your bank asks or anyone for two-factor authentication, do not fear it. It's going to help you. Mm. What does it mean? It means that you will receive verification from your email that someone logged in or you have logged in. And at the same time, you can also receive it via SMS. Um, that's very important. So that's two-factor authentication. Whenever you have an account, if they ask you for two-factor, go for it. So be wary of phishing scams. Always double check the sender's email address and be cautious about clicking on links and downloading attachments. I believe that um, the risk is also in future going to be on PDF documents. Uh, PDF documents is becoming very complex because there's a range of things or elements that can be inserted. And I foresee some challenges that's going to happen with PDF documents. Um, so people ought to be in future aware about it because if I see how PDF documents are created and um, some formulas you can insert and a range of things, we're looking at the challenge there in future. I'm just mentioning it now. Why? Because of metadata. Uh, that's a big thing. So the other aspect is keep software updated. Take time to update your phone. If your phone is asking update we all want to say um, select the option for tomorrow and again tomorrow you select another option for tomorrow and you're walking with your phone hey. and the phone is asking for updates but you just never have time yeah. so please make sure that you update your phone it's very important and obviously try to find in a space that has wi-fi to download the updates and then afterwards it will ask you when can you install it so please make time for that and also educate yourself and others stay informed talk about it if you have a bright talk about these cyber safety mm. tips if you're in the kitchen talk about it that we can start becoming aware of technology and you can even reference the show i'm hearing a lot um last week a listener came to me after the show it was yeah. the next day and we chatted we talked and he shared his insight on technology so i can really see the show is helping people in conversations that we can be confident on speaking about things yeah Mm. All right. Um, a listener's asking, salams and hi, Llewellyn. So you were saying one can hide the SSID. Do I need to use a laptop to gain access to the router or can I use my phone? And once it's hidden, must I every time go and unhide it to connect someone? Right. If I have a LAN cable in my fiber router right can i split it at the other end to provide connectivity to two devices example two laptops if possible and how there's a uh, it's a mouthful it's a mouthful I'll, I'll answer the first one okay. i'm not gonna f uh but the uh because i'm not aware of the router that's okay. a very important thing and um what i would want to answer is you can insert or you can add people to your router right. um, through the MAC address. That's one option if you understand the MAC address of the phone. But I think um, you can also make your SSID available um, to people that must see with the IP address. So yes, the risk also shows that you have to enable the SSID. That is what the listener wants to know. If she wants to add new people, in that case, yes. Some routers are sophisticated. Uh, it will allow you a better option, but in a simple option, yes, you have to enable it. People can see it, you connect it, and then you take it from there. So your router will also show you who's basically connected to it. Um, with the last section, um, what I want to add, if there's more devices um, that can be connected, and we know routers have a limited of devices, um, it is possible to connect it to that existing router. But the other reference is I'm not fully aware of that part man, yet of the fiber. I still need to just find out that okay. and then I'll get back to the listener on that yeah, for additional connection. Shh. That is, um, thank you so much to the dear listener for that. You know, with every message or every comment or any question that you send through, we all learn together. Yes. So don't forget that, 0786 10 11 12. Salam, must we update our phone or laptop when you receive a message to do so? With the laptop, if it's a Windows laptop, it will be um, asked at the bottom, at the bottom right, 
updates and you are able to update. That's very important. The MacBook, if you're using a different, uh, there mm. will also be a request for updates. You will see it in your iCloud account. Mm. When it gets to your phone, obviously your phone will show you a notification. So yes, um, these are the three areas that you need to understand. But what you must remember, you will see the word update on your laptop immediately um, at the bottom right. Don't find it in another software. You have to see it exactly on the screen. Correct. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you to the dear listener. So, Llewellyn, why a month dedicated to cybersecurity? We always talk about it. Yes, I think that we have to bring justice to that. Mm. So, we're looking at uh, one of my answers towards that is call out human uniqueness. Uh, People are susceptible to cognitive biases and social engineering tactics. So, that means um, the risk can exist where people will feel this will not happen to me. That's one of the things. That's the Mm. reason why we need to talk about. Um, Why we also mention it is also the bandwagon effect also leads for us to conform to the behavior of others. Now, we're also going to be alert about it. And this can make us more likely to click on a link in an email if we see that other people have already clicked on. To address these kind of vulnerabilities, that's the reason why we are talking about it. The other one, tailor messages to different audiences. Um, Today's show, we are coming not with high-tech information, we're coming with stories. um, And that helps a lot that people of different audiences, for me, Everyone listening to the show, there are those that are IT boffins that are listening, that yeah. are enjoying this, and they really feel at home with the show. There are those that uh, are really want to know more about it, that are listening with the show in a very attentive way and say, I want to know more about IT. People are leaving the office now, and this is what they need to hear because uh, they are not attending to it. So there's some those that are feeling guilty while listening to the message. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have different audiences listening to this technology. So and that actually helps a lot, and that's the reason why we're talking about it. The other option is harness the power of social influence. So human behavior is significantly influenced by social norms and peer pressure. Mm. If people start talking about it, then only a change will take place. That's the reason why we're talking about it today. So there's some short-term consequences. Um, The campaigns which we have and what we talk about, people can forget about it tomorrow, but we need to continue with it. The last one is what I would want to call reinforce. That's the reason why uh, this is so important. So psychology tells us information is forgotten over time, if not reinforced. That's the reason why in this show we need to provide ongoing reinforcement and refresher throughout these programs to help people to feel safe about technology. Because there's a lot to learn about technology, but if we do not associate security with it, Mm. we're going to have challenges. So that's the reason why people would send you emails every day about the topic. Blogs, uh, newsletters, alerts, um, reminders. Why? Because we continue to forget. Uh, if I wake up the first, one of the first things I do is check my calendar for the meetings for the day. Yeah. So reinforcement <laughs> is very important. And today's topic is another way of just reinforcing us to understand how important cybersecurity is. And not just for those that are not uh, tech buffons, right? But yeah. for even for those ones that are <laughs> experts in, in, in technology and, and um I, I know of, of okay. persons that yeah. have been caught as well. <laughs> okay. So, yes, reminder so. is good. It's good because we can fall victim to, like the word blind spot. Uh, mm. it, it can easily become a blind spot because we would believe this would not happen to us. Yeah. I'm an IT person, I have my diploma, I have this, and all of a sudden I would feel safe of clicking, but it has happened to the best of them. Mm. More IT people fell victim to ransomware and a range of things than those who are not completely computer literate, you know, if we because it first started out with IT people being on the computer. I know I'm mentioning a very controversial topic, but maybe that is how it started. But now we're looking at people having mobile phones connected to the internet yeah. and everyone ought to be alert because one of the challenges you sit with whatever you click on, and this is how Google has built ill its algorithm whatever you click on is going to come back to you Mm. man it seems like sewing and reaping at the same time whatever you click on whatever ad you're going to click on it's going to come back in the form of more ads Mm. in that regard so you ought to be careful on what you click on and is this really what you want one of the things i actually struggle with which i still need to validate as um, all these voice prompts now, I've canceled all the voice prompts on my phone because I would be in a meeting and the phone would speak to me back. <laughs> and that was a little bit embarrassing because yeah. I activated all these yeah. voice prompts. 
But then the challenge which I had with voice prompts, I would speak about dog food, mm. but not typing it in. All of a sudden, Google will give me dog food as a list. So those are the kind of things that started creeping up. I became fearful on it and I started deactivating it because you it's eaves, eavesdropping. We can call it's it eavesdropping, eavesdropping in that regard. Yeah. So if you have experienced something that you talked about and Google showed it to you the next day, Try to send us a message through the technique so that we can validate what we're talking about. Indeed. I'm going to quickly read out um, uh, these messages and that's where we're going to end as well. It says, I always enjoy this program enlightening us. Alhamdulillah. My question is, from what age is advisable to at- attend the I Can Center? And thank you to Llewellyn, says the listener. Yes, that's a good More question. Mm. Yes. Um, coming back to that in the morning, we don't allow kids because it's schooling. School, yes. But especially in the afternoon, and we've taken on kids that uh, starts from the age of eight years old. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. eight years old, yes. There we go. Eight years old. We will give the telephone number in a bit or contact details just in a bit. I want to quickly read out the last WhatsApp. My friend and I had a chat the other day, and he informed that he found out that his neighbor... Accessed, he, he accessed, oh my goodness, mm. his Vuma, Vuma <laughs> yes. fiber router. When he leaves home, he switched it off. Will a change of password prevent the illegal access? And is it true that an iPhone actually displays the Wi Fi password? Interesting. Both are correct. That is possible. Right. The password can be changed on the Vumatel right. router. Uh. Yes, that is possible to change it and having it more security levels. Going to the Vumatel router, there's so much settings that, that we just stick to the entry level. There's so many advanced, so it ought to be explored. Secondly, yes, I think the w- I was part of that conversation where I heard where the Wi-Fi of the iPhone or the iPhone itself can show the Wi-Fi password, password. meaning so visible once it's connected, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, there we have it. And this is so thank you so much uh, to the listeners um, for participating and engaging with us. We learn together. Llewellyn, um, contact details, please. 061 542 1836. 061 542 1836. That's the I can center line. You thank also, you. I mean, your media, social media handle? Our social media handle is GCTSA. That goes both for X, not Twitter anymore, and also Facebook. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much to Llewellyn Skulls, all the way from um, Alsis River, the ICANN Center, talking to us about celebrating Cyber Security Month. And I hope that you are taking note of the tips that were shared. And um, yeah, till we speak to you again, Llewellyn.